Welcome back to the Storytime Castle. Today we have a Disney book called Pinocchio. Once upon a time in a little Italian village there lived an old artist named Geppetto. He made the most magnificent toys, music boxes, and puppets. Of his many creations Geppetto was most proud of a little wooden puppet that he had nearly finished working on. Geppetto entered his workshop with a paintbrush in hand. Figaro, his cat, climbed up onto the table facing his master while Cleo the goldfish swam in circles in her bowl. Three quick brush strokes. Eyebrows and a smile appeared on the puppet's face. The old man decided to name this puppet Pinocchio. As he did every night, Geppetto wished upon a star. I wish to have a son who is gentle and kind, just like my little Pinocchio. With that, the old man went to sleep, with Figaro at his side. He dreamed of a little boy and slept soundly with a smile on his face. As Geppetto and Figaro slept, the blue fairy appeared in the workshop and approached Pinocchio. She looked at the little puppet and whispered, So you are the little puppet boy that has made Geppetto wish for a son. She tapped Pinocchio with her wand and said, Awake, little puppet. The next morning, Geppetto awoke to find his puppet dancing. How wonderful, he cried and jumped out of bed. It's not a dream. My wish has come true. My Pinocchio is a real boy. The whole household celebrated. Geppetto had never been happier. A few days later, Geppetto got Pinocchio ready. Today, you're going to school, he told him. What school? Pinocchio asked. It's a wonderful place where you will learn to read books with all the other children, explained Geppetto. As Pinocchio headed out towards the village, he was spotted by Gideon, the cat, and a sly fox named Honest John. Intrigued by this talking puppet, they came up with a plan to take him and sell him to Stromboli's theater. As Pinocchio passed them in the street, Honest John tripped him with his cane. The two tricksters convinced Pinocchio that he could be a star. You're a hundred times more interesting than any real boy. You belong in Stromboli's theater, said Honest John. Flattered, Pinocchio forgot all about school and followed the swindlers up the path. When Stromboli saw Pinocchio, his eyes lit up with greed. That same evening, Pinocchio gave his first performance. He danced with a marionette that was controlled by strings. The audience was so impressed that they showered the stage with gold coins. Stromboli was thrilled. When Pinocchio did not come home after school, Geppetto began to worry. By the glow of his lantern, he combed the village for his beloved Pinocchio, but could not find him anywhere. Geppetto was so upset, he could hardly eat or sleep. A few days later, Pinocchio asked Stromboli if he could bring some of the money that he had earned back to his father, but the puppeteer laughed. Poor little fool! You think I would let a gold mine like you out of my sight? From now on, you'll stay in this cage. Pinocchio cried long and hard. When Stromboli had left, the blue fairy appeared. Why, Pinocchio, how did you end up in here? She asked him. I was kidnapped by a horrible monster with big eyes. He lied. Pinocchio looked down at his nose in surprise. It had grown into a tree branch. Horrified, he promised the blue fairy that he would never lie again. The fairy released him from the cage. All the while, Gideon and Honest John were making a deal with a coachman. I'm missing only one child for the next trip, the coachman told the swindlers. If you can get me one more child, you'll be rewarded with gold. As they left the tavern, the tricksters crossed paths with Pinocchio. 
they offered him a trip to a place called Pleasure Island. A coach full of happy, laughing children pulled up. It was led by some very frightened-looking donkeys. Pinocchio was a little hesitant, but climbed into the coach. We're off to Pleasure Island, cried the coachman with a wicked laugh. On the boat ride to Pleasure Island, Pinocchio met a naughty boy named Lampwick. He lit a cigar and began to smoke. We're not allowed to smoke, cried Pinocchio. Don't be foolish, said the boy. We can do anything we want here. Pinocchio preferred sweets, and there was no shortage of them. There were piles of lollipops, sandwiches, cakes, and sausages. But not far away, the horrible coachman was leading his guards to the island. Laugh all you want, he called out. At the end of the night, all of you will turn into donkeys and pull my wagons through the salt mines. Suddenly, long furry ears spouted from Lampwick's head, and he fell to all fours. His hands and feet had turned into hooves. When Pinocchio's ears began to grow out like Lampwick's, he ran as quickly as he could across the island. Night had fallen, and the place that had once been like a dream quickly became a nightmare. When he reached the sea, Pinocchio dove into the water. The tide had pushed a bottle up to the shore, and there was a message inside. Pinocchio read the message. It was bad news. While searching for Pinocchio, poor Geppetto had been swallowed by a whale named Monstro. Pinocchio set out to save his father. When Pinocchio found Monstro, the big whale let out a yawn. Pinocchio could see Geppetto deep in the fish's belly. He looked sad. Without warning, Monstro sucked up a school of fish and Pinocchio too. Geppetto was fishing in the whale's belly without success. Just then, he heard a familiar voice. Father, it's me. I'm here to rescue you. Geppetto was thrilled to see his beloved Pinocchio again. They hugged each other that night, or, or they hugged each other tight. Now they had to find a way to escape. Pinocchio suggested that they light a fire to make the whale sneeze. As the smoke rose, the whale became restless. Get in the raft, everyone, cried Pinocchio. The whale inhaled deeply and let out a huge sneeze. He spat all of them out into the open water. Geppetto was tired and weak. He couldn't swim any further. Pinocchio swam with his father on his back. It took every ounce of strength he had to make it to shore. When Geppetto awoke, he found Pinocchio still laying face down in the water. Geppetto brought Pinocchio's lifeless body home. He knelt beside the bed and cried. Once again, the blue fairy appeared. With a wave of her wand, Pinocchio opened his eyes and sat up with a smile. He became a real boy. Geppetto's wish had finally come true. And that's the end of today's story. I hope you'll join us next time at the Storytime Castle.